Hello YouTube and welcome to a yet another web app tutorial. Uh, in the last video we had completed our initial setup of the web app, put all the boilerplate and um, structure just to be able to build and boot up a web app. Uh, so we've got this kind of root uh, creating a container that then creates our React app using Parcel to build our application and then we've just then able to run that web app and print out hello world which is our like top level entry point into the web app so in this section we're going to now start building this web app out and we're going to include uh the routing uh so as you you'd probably seen on many websites you'll have this kind of thing slash login slash register slash um home page and they all are like you say different uh effectively web pages for our web app and we're going to build the routing into that so react knows when it uh, when we link to one of those endpoints that uh, react will send us to the right page so we're going to build out all those pages um, build out the scaffolding for that and, and the routing for that um, so to start we will create oh, so i've built up my code reference here so what we need to do that is use a tool called react router um, so what we want to do is at the top level here we're going to say const a router so again it's similar to the kind of routing that we have for our back end um, you know different endpoints to represent different data here we're going to have different endpoints to represent the different web pages that we uh, want to show the user and those web pages are built out of components in react so we have a kind of modular system and given a route, we'll use certain components to then represent that page. Um, which one we're going to use is we're going to create a hash router using React Router DOM, and that was a package that we installed in the last uh, session, last video. Um, and in there, it builds out these are like the instructions of how our app will be routed. Um, so we will then start with um, the top level path and this is like you know like the index.html and we're going to say that every um web page that we build is going to be uh require be a starter with this element called we're going to call it scaffold which will be the normal we'll always have a header we'll always have a footer that's consistent across our web app and then we'll have a container that will then have the per web page specific uh, context and elements in it um, so we're going to define that element there and we can then um, go into web app and create a new folder called components and we're going to call this the um, let's call it the root component then well like you say scaffolding so call it root.tsx in here uh, we're going to export the component Um, so even though it says like it's a function here, um, all the you know, React um, kind of styling is called they call them components. So this is a functional component in fullness. But yeah, you can treat these. Think of these as the little elements of the web page that we're building out. And here we're going to simply return um, a a nav bar at the top and a footer at the bottom. Uh, in this case, we're just going to, we will write those in full uh, later, but maybe we're just for um, for the demo at the moment, we'll just have some placeholders in there. So maybe we'll just highlight here, oops, h1 as uh, to do header. And this will be replaced with the header later. And we can do another one, let's do a h1 below um, to do Footer. and then in between these we are going to have a uh, container uh, should automatically import from react bootstrap let's um, get that imported first import container oops not from react dom container from react bootstrap that's the one there and we're going to place that container here so this is where we're going to house all our like kind of uh specific 
um, uh, so specific uh, web page content. And to do that, we give this an outlet. So um, I'll show you how that connects up in a second. Uh, so the container just gives us some borders and the class name MT5 gives us a top border of five pixels, a margin of five, MT margin of five pixels. You could see that in the bootstrap uh, documentation of these different class names. And then the header there, of course, it's just a H1 and H1. So it's going to just space between those. In our app, if we go back to the app.tsx and we want to use that element. So we'll import the root. Uh, there we go. So it automatically found that for us. So if I just get my example back up here, I can split right. So we have then that's going to be every page that goes to slash, uh, you know, a slash and then anything else. We'll start with the root and then we're going to then add bits to that root. And we do that by um, a function called children. So in here, we then effectively start creating a list of, sub, you know, sub paths and then what they might want. So in here, we can do a path. Um, forward slash again and we can give it the elements and what we're going to do this if we're going to call it this is going to be the, the pages so i've got a folder called components which are going to be like bits of pieces that will contribute to a page and then um i'll also create a folder called pages uh so we can know you know specific components that represent pages um again this is entirely um your 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 own styling and how you might want to structure your code. So in this, we're going to call, create one called index page .tsx. And again, we're just going to create a very simple uh, export, a uh, simple react function there, export index page, we'll call it. Um, and as you can see, all the kind of components, the default is to uh, capitalize that first letter. We're going to just return a simple component. Uh, we're going to call this index page. So when we start looking through the endpoints, we'll be able to see that. Um, so we'll import that in here. Uh, index page. And what this children does is that those elements here that we display are going to then be imported into the outlet here. So that's how it inserts those children into the outlet. And that's how we can build that kind of structure. Um, so we've got a root and we've got the index page. We can also at the top level provide an error page. So if we haven't got, if we can't resolve the path uh, for, uh, for any reason, uh, we can pass it an error element and that could be a, a custom element just to say you know that there was an error accessing so if someone tries to pick a route that we haven't defined um, so in our components or maybe we'll put it in pages we can go error page .tsx and return error page oh, function what they doing export function error page and uh, return Oops. There we go. Uh, so simple ones again. H one. Oops. Oops. No page here. Maybe there we go. So we've just got a little error just in case uh, someone tries to access somewhere else on the website that we do not have a page to. Um, so we can then pass that into here. Error page. Okay, so we've got our children there. Um, we're erroring at the moment because we're still building it out. But as you can see, this is just rebuilding. I've got it running actually in the uh, command console, you know, that PMPM start web app. Um, so every time this is running, it's updating the um, website for us, rebuilding it. And because we've got, uh, we haven't fully, fully finished the um, pathing here, we get that error. And that's because actually for that comma there, and now it's rebuilt and it's got our hello world. Um, but that's still just connected to this uh, hello world that we have in the app so that it has no knowledge of this at the moment but we can fix that by just uh, adding it to our react app 
So by doing that, we do this by using router provider, and we give it about the root the router provider component our function there router. Um, and we've got that all imported. That's all good. I've got an error. Um, no. Ah, I haven't closed this off. There we go. That's what I need to do. There we go. Um, as you can see, React strict mode there has a closing statement here, slash React. If it's just a single root there, we then place a closing statement at the end of the actual. Uh, um, oh, we cannot find accordion. But it's okay, we'll keep. We shouldn't need that to build the web app. There we go. Um, it's probably like it was trying to build halfway whilst I was editing the, um, the content. So just press control save and then it automatically re rebuilds. It's constantly watching the um the content of our of our um re repository so we've got how oh, here we go we've got our to do header we've got our to do footer and in between there we have the index page so it's resolved that it's pulled in the index page into our root display the header display the footer and now we've got the index page printed out which comes from our index page here so in a case then it's a simple of almost rinse and repeat this for different uh, path endpoints so we will want one for uh, login uh, login uh, and we'll do elements and I'll just copy and paste this over just to help so but then we've got a login we'll have a register and we'll have a home page Login, register, and home. Okay, so um, at the moment, it'll error because we haven't added the elements. So let's create those pages. So login page .csx and um, a register page .csx and what was it? and it was the home page so the index page is going to be open to everyone that's what they all come to login page of course is going to have our login form register page register form uh, when they log in we want to forward our logged in users to the home page um, so they can see their to do's and add and uh, remove to do's from their to-do list um, so we've created those pages we need to then um, export function uh, login page and again for this case but at the moment we'll just say login page just as we've done before um, I'll copy this text and then just repeat that for the home page so we'll call this one home page oops Double click, home page. And register page, do the same again. Register page. Okay. And then we can just import these in here. Uh, and I've got a uh, like say each component or page has got its own it's stored in its own file um, again it not doesn't necessarily need to be like that you could have all the pages in a single file uh, that's entirely up to you how you want to export them and import them um, into your app and structure your code uh, so your register page and our home page here we go um so yeah it's rebuilt we're back to the index page as we're using hash router we need to put a hash in our um our headline and we want to then create let's say login there we go and it goes to our login page um register goes to our register page so we are now you know linking those uh those together so we are able to transition between them and we've built out 
really the, the, the bare bones of the, the app again with, with the, the pages. So now we need to actually fill those with, with content. Um, how are we doing for time? Yeah, yeah, only 15 minutes in, so that's great. So I think we should do the, the header. Let's complete the actual header component and get that all set up and the footer component um, and get that all tidied up. Um, and maybe even start filling out some of the, the login page information. Um, well, the other thing we want might also look at, but maybe I was thinking for this next episode would be to how we then authenticate um, a root so a user can't go to a root at the moment because we could go to home um, and it take us straight to that home page. So how do we, um, you know, avoid that? Uh, we, uh, because like you say, they're not logged in at the moment. So we might do that in the next video. We'll see how we get on. Okay, so now app, uh, so we want the app nav bar, so we'll call that app nav bar dot tsx. Start creating this component and let's call again the function at nav bar return um, nav bar. And uh, we'll get that in a little pull up from React. So, nav bar, we have bootstrap. Um, let's expand when small. So it'll take the full width of the um, full width of the screen. Um, we're going to have the um, background body. Let's see what primary looks like. So these are some custom color schemes, the default color schemes, uh, body primary, body secondary and tertiary. Um, you can customize those with custom CSS. Um, we might not go, we might do a bit later on, um, but at the moment we're just going to use the default color schemes that the uh, um, Bootstrap comes with. We're going to put this in a container. There we go. And we're going to just have our nav bar uh, dot brand. There we go. And we are going to call. Uh, Say that it's not going to go anywhere because it's also a hyperlink it can be. Um, we're going to call this to do or my to do app, and I think that's okay for now. Uh, we'll be adding a few other bits where we'll add the the link, the buttons to go to the login and register page. We might add that in a bit. Uh, so we've created that app nav bar. We want to then attach it to our root. So remove this to do header. I'm going to do app nav bar uh, in here. Close that off. And now we've created our um, my to do app bar. So we see it's slightly updated the, the styling and it's still all white. I wonder if we change it. Uh, let's try and change it to secondary. That we can actually see some um, color com come in. There we go. So it's just made it a grey, but there you can you can see now what the what it's doing. It's creating that nav bar, um, and we're about to do brand at the top there, and that could be could be an image um, going forward as well. Um, so then it's the same again for the the the, the footer. So let's do app footer tsx and export function. Um, app and we're going to do return container and we're going to have a horizontal line to break it out so we're going to see that and let's do some just a paragraph text um, and we're going to just say you know um, yes web uh, tutorial oh it's another full stack about tutorial so maybe it would do to do at by yet another full stack tutorial and then we can um, add that to the root as well because we want that on every single page 
Um, so it shows how powerful we can do to make reusable components that we use throughout our website. And there we go. So it's already to do app by yet another web app tutorial. So there is, it's all on there. And then we can start populating um, the, the, the content of our home, login, register pages. Uh, so what are we doing? So we can, I think what would be good is maybe have a look at this authentication. So what we've got at the moment is that we can go to that home page, but if the, log, the user's not logged in, then um, we they are able to access that page already. And we don't want that to happen. Um, to do that, we are going to create a component called authenticated root text. Um, and this um, got function authenticated root. Okay, um, so this root is going to then check whether our um, person is valid. If not, then uh, if we have a user logged in, um, then we'll take them to the the actual page. If not, we will send them to a different page and we'll call that the authorized page. Um, so we will need to but first have some way of knowing whether a user's logged in. Um, so at the moment, we'll keep that there because we'll need that uh, in a second. To do that, we want to have um, access at our top level uh, to some level of context, some information throughout our web app. That's going to be our user. Um, so what we're going to do is create what we call uh, an app context. That then persists throughout our application and we can access throughout our application. Um, and we're going to uh, start typing this. So we're going to say app data is going to be in our application context. It's going to have the token, which is going to be a string or null for us. Um, and it's going to have um, uh, we'll, we'll add more actually in a bit, so we won't necessarily have to um, unpack it all here. And we then need to create a type called app context data. Um, and this is going to, so we're going to use a function called React, uh, use context in React. And we're just going to say, well, what is that context going to include? So it's going to include app data uh, and it's of type app data at the top. And set, oops, set app data is going to be um, going to be yeah, data like app data, and it's going to void out. So there's going to be a function that we can then use to update this um, app data, and we're just defining that. So you need to pass app data to update um, the actual context. Um, and we can then export that as app context and we're going to create a context around that so that enables um react to monitor that that data set or that piece of data and um enable it to we then when we create the components um and look for you know changes to that that data uh, that data react will automatically update our components for us so we get that reactive um you know, website. So as soon as you log in, it'll take you to the right page. It will also, you know, update the nav bar to have your email information. All of that just happens by us updating this object. And then throughout the, um, throughout the components, they're checking if statements to say, yeah, if the data is available, print out name, um, change the buttons for us. Um, so it's going to be your context set, and we're going to then say the default, of course, is going to just be token is null. So we're going to not have a token in here. And we're going to set that data as an empty function uh, for now. So that's um, created our you know React context. Um, 
and then back into the app here we will then now define that um, context so we will have to go to the top level of our app so when someone loads it for the first time we're going to initialize that app data and set app data and we're going to use right so this is going to monitor the state of the um, bit and it's going to be your type app data oops have I exported app data from here? Yep. Okay, I just need to import it from our import app data. There we go. And I need to import use state. Uh, use state. There we go. Okay, so we're going to just. So use state enables us to monitor changes or enables um, enables React to monitor those states and then we're going to give it the default okay so it's the default information of token equals null and then we're going to put this in something known as the um, app context uh, provider so very similar to root provider it's app context dot provider and close that off we put this in here and then in there and we're going to pass it um, the value of app data. So we're going to give it the app data and the set app data function. Um, so these then effectively are going to persist throughout provider through this uh, function. Oops, and it's not. It's a curly brace. Okay. So this sets it all up so that that data we'll define at the top level and then we'll be able to now access that through our different pages so let's go back to our authenticated routes so it's going to check whether the person has permission um, we're going to grab that app data so pull that app data equals use context so we're going to get that context app context Okay, so we know that that exists within our app. We're going to grab that information and simply then do an if statement here if app data got token. So if there's a to token exists, then we'll trust that it's valid. You could put some validation checks in there, of course. And we'll pass the outlet. Um, so that means, okay, whatever below the router, let's return that. So return the web page. If not, we're going to return a web page unauthorized. Um, access and we will create that web page in the pages so here we go um, authorize uh, page.tsx and we do export function unauthorized um, page and Let's create a component. Here we go. So, um, and then we can have a maybe a you shall not pass. You can have something, of course, a bit more uh, useful to the end user. But that means, uh, yep, we'll return that if they're not authenticated. So we'll put that in the authorized page here. So now we've got this authenticated route component how how do we feed that into our routing so we need to go to our app context and what we want to do is actually just extend our because the only one we're going to authenticate for this case is the um home page so before prior to going to the uh, home page we want to do the authenticated root component and then the children of that um, and if we just add that, so again, it's just going going down this hierarchy. Oops, let me code on there. Uh, code on there, and again, the path. We'll say okay, yeah, it's still on home. No, no changes to the path. And the element here is going to be the home page. 
Um, so now our home page is protected by this authenticated root tool. You'll imagine if you've hit that, like you said, slash home, you'll start with path, it'll create the root, it will then go um, down to the home, um, start building the authenticated root bit. That will check whether we will continue to the outlet, which would be the home page, or uh, exit and go to the um, unauthorized. So if all is well and good, ah, there we go. Yep, it's already updated for us. So I was going to, so if I just place that out, so like you say, if we're at the page, index page, ah, that's all good. Then we want to go to the home page. It comes up to you shall not pass. So it's done our check that we haven't got a token available to us um, in the app. So the user's not logged in. Um, so we, we can't go proceed any further down to our uh, application. And that I think is a good place to stop. Um, so really there we've built out all the routing and the authentication and even introduced this idea of this context, this widely available big piece of data. Um, in the next, uh, yeah, next tutorial, we will then build out some buttons on our nav bar to go to the login and register page. We'll build out those login and register pages so we can, um, yeah, actually log our users in and register them. And we'll also then store that data, show you how to store that data in this app data function, and also use the power of the web browser called local storage to keep that token. So if they close the tab and reopen it, but uh, it will grab that token, that token will be stored um, within the browser. We can then return that so they don't have to re-log in if the token is, is still valid. So hope that's uh, all good for you. Um, Happy coding and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.